Regulations, rather. Uh, before we get started, I would like to ask Mr. Dixon to lay out the ground rules. Uh, Mr. Federty will make an opening statement outlining the process that has been established for the, to, to, that brought us to this phase. At that point, members of the public or members of the industry will be invited to make comments on the matter before the board today. We ask that there only be one representative from each entity, whether it be a business or a consumer or um, participant in the industry from each organization to comment, and to limit those comments to three minutes. Um, I'll time the comments, and at two minutes, I'll let you know that you're at two minutes and begin to wrap up. If you have additional material that you want to submit to the board, you're invited to do that in writing, um, and we'll receive those after the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Uh, next, we'll have Executive Director of Fennerty. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, first, I'd like to introduce the authority staff and board members that are here present today. The Chairman is here, Mr. Ashdale. Mr. Kaltenberger is present. Mr. Stutzman is present. Dr. Wrigley is present. Mr. Kaltenberger is present. And Mr. Wagner is present. That meets the quorum of four. All six members are present. Matthews. All six members are present. Uh, the authority staff from the far right uh, is William Schmidt, the Director of Enforcement for the Taxi and Limousine Branch, uh, Menaka Jordan, the Administrative Manager for the uh, Taxi and Limousine Branch, Charles Milstein, the Assistant to the Director of the Taxi and Limousine Branch, and Mr. Dixon, who is the Parking Authority's uh, Senior Director of Administration. And to the rear of them is Corinne O'Connor, the Long Street Director, Brian Yulett, the Associate uh, and Associate General Counsel. <laughs> to my right is Dr. Wrigley, Mr. Mr. Wagner, Mr. Stutzman, Mr. Ashdale. To my left is Mr. Tolkenberger, Mr. Matthews, Counsel to the Board, Bernard, Bernard Small, the Esquire, uh, and Dennis Weldon, our General Counsel, Carl Ziegler, First Deputy Executive Director, Linda Miller, Deputy Executive Director Nassima Buchanan, Senior Director of Engineering and Design. In back of the General Counsel is Mark, Mark O'Rourke, our media consultant. And to my and directly in back of me is Sue Cornell, our Director of Customer Service, our Manager of Customer Service. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to now proceed with the recommended board actions. Okay, at this at this point I would like to uh, Open it up to public comment. Yeah, no, no. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I see a camera and I get all <laughs> confused. Okay, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, as you're aware, the Philadelphia Parking Authority has regulated taxis and, and limousines in Philadelphia since 2005. The regulatory period period now spans eight fiscal years and has been marked by a significant overall improvement to those industries. From the improvement to the quality of vehicles, removal, the removal of illegal taxi and limousine operators, the training of drivers, and many more important enhancements, the public now receives better service as a result of the authority's regulations. We have no intention of resting on our past successes. We have no, excuse me, we have no intention of resting on our past successes and will continue to strive to provide world-class level of taxi and limousine service in Philadelphia County. There has been a tremendous amount of flux in terms of the authority's legal position as a regulator of taxi and limousines. In 2009, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court determined that the authority is a Commonwealth agency when it regulates taxis and limousines, but is a local agency otherwise. 
because no court had ever determined that the authority was anything but a local agency, that the decision was on that Supreme Court decision was unexpected. In 2010, the Pennsylvania Commonwealth Court determined that the authority's taxi and limousine, and limousine regulations were not valid because we did not adhere to the Pennsylvania Commonwealth Agency regulatory promulgation process. The authority immediately appealed to the Commonwealth Court decision. By appealing that decision, an automatic stay was put in place. Therefore, our current taxi and limousine regulations remain valid and enforceable pending a determination by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. The Commonwealth Court then reversed the automatic stay as to one Philadelphia taxi cab company and ruled that that company did not have to pay any fees to the authority. The Supreme Court then reversed the Commonwealth Court's second decision. Therefore, our current regulations and fee schedules are binding on all Philadelphia taxi cab and limousine operations. We await the Supreme Court's overall decision as to the validity of our current regulations and anticipate that case will be argued in front of the full Supreme Court this coming fall. Despite the Supreme Court's decisions, several taxi cab and limousine companies have refused to submit their vehicles for inspection by the authority, have begun to provide service with drivers that not have been certified by the authority, and have refused to pay their annual fees to the authority as required by our fee schedule, which is adopted each year only after a review by the General Assembly of Pennsylvania. The enforcement actions associated with these violations unnecessarily tax the authority's resources. More importantly, the public health, safety, and welfare are endangered through the use of uninspected vehicles and uncertified drivers. While we are hopeful that our arguments will prevail before the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, the outcome is obviously uncertain. To the extent that the Supreme Court determines that our current regulations are invalid because we did not follow the Commonwealth Agency process for promulgating regulations, we will need to be prepared. Therefore, the authority staff initiated a rulemaking process in 2010 that accumulated in a November 23, 2010 order of the board. Though that order, the authority, excuse me, through that order, the authority issued proposed regulations and the matter consisted with the Commonwealth Agency process. The process requires first that the proposed regulators be submitted to, that the proposed regulations be submitted to the Pennsylvania Attorney General for review as to form and legality. Once the Attorney General approved the proposed regulations, we filed them with the House Urban Affairs Committee and the Senate Consumer Protection and Professional Licensure Committee. These standing committees have been assigned by their respective chambers of the General Assembly to monitor the authority's rulemaking process. We also filed the proposed regulations with the Pennsylvania Independent Regulatory Review Commissioner, known as IRC, and the Legislative Reference Bureau. The proposed regulations were published in the January 15, 2011 issue of the Pennsylvania Board. The proposed regulations were subject to public comment through February 14, 2011. Several staff members from IRC then met with authority staff to review questions related to the proposed regulations. IRC submitted its own comments to the proposed regulations in March of this year. Four members of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives also submitted comments to the proposed regulations. The authority has also appeared before the House Urban Affairs Committee at a meeting that addressed a variety of issues related to the proposed regulations. The authority staff initiated the review of the comments from legislators, IRC, and the public in March of this year. 
Staff also invited every commentator to attend a one-on-one -on -one meeting to discuss the comments and potential points of uh, consensus. We have uh, estimated that approximately 750 comments were reviewed in all. In order to proceed to the final form phase of this regulatory promulgation process, the authority is required, among many other things, to respond to each comment. Those responses are included in this order. The final form regulations are attached to the final rulemaking order in Annex A, in Appendix A, excuse me. Language added to the proposed regulations is underlined. Language that has been deleted, deleted is in brackets. Those regulations are significantly different from those that appeared in the proposed regulations. In many cases, the comments and the meetings between the taxi and limousine division and the industry members simply generated better ways of approaching various issues and in other cases, typographical errors, mistakes, and inconsistencies were identified and corrected. We have removed many progressive requirements related to the condition of vehicles, insurance, driver limitations, <coughs> certificate owner responsibilities, in the face of assertion that those regulations represented significant changes to the regulations currently in place in Philadelphia. It was averred by many commentators that many of those regulations would duly increase operational costs and adversely impact the fi finances of the regulated parties and the fares paid by the riding public. ERC agreed with many of the commentators in that regard. Therefore, the sections of the regulations that address those subjects have been deleted or substantially revised. The final form regulations that appear in Appendix A of the proposed final rulemaking order evidence the type of consensus building that ERC strives to achieve in regulations promulgated by a Commonwealth agency. We believe it is more important to ensure that a proven and sound body of taxi, cab, and limousine regulations remain in Philadelphia then to strive for a, succeed, a series of significant improvements to those industries, which is better left to a smaller and more focused rulemaking. Therefore, I recommend that this board adopt and enter the proposed final rulemaking order provided in the, uh, provided in the material provided today. I respectfully submit this for board approval after much work by my staff, which I'd like to thank, and thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Director Frederick. Okay. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to open it up to public comment. We have a list. Oh, we have a list? Okay. All right. Let's start with uh, Ronald Blunt from the United Taxi Workers Alliance. Good morning. Good morning, Ronald. Good morning. Good morning. Good How you guys doing today? Good, how you doing, Ron? It's Miller. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read a statement. It's going to be under three minutes. Um, while we are grateful for the many reasonable changes the PPA has made to their proposed taxi regulations, we are perplexed by the little time that the authority 